So at 6 p.m. Pacific, that means 9 p.m. Eastern. This is the uh, conference call that we do pretty much every weekday unless there's a holiday or some other uh, event that interferes with our uh, doing this. Uh, we do this uh, at uh, basically the end of the, uh, the work day here at the, uh, at the uh, headquarters of FlexCom America Incorporated, headquartered here in Henderson, Nevada, just outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, basically what we do is uh, the format that we're using right now is reporting you to our videos that are up on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Power to Change, P-O-W-E-R, and then the uh, number two, and then C-H-A-N-G-E, Power to Change, all one word. So you go to YouTube.com, Y-O-U-T. U-B-E dot C-O-M, and then uh, you type into that search window at the top. The, uh, I basically got more information saying that uh, the YouTube search engine is between the second and the fourth largest search engine on earth. And uh, so uh, when you're looking at uh, our SEO, it's a great thing that we have a YouTube channel, and we need to get the viewership of all the videos there up. So you go to YouTube.com, you type into that search engine at the top of the uh, of the, of the uh, page there, you type in Power to Change, P-O-W-E-R, the number two, and then C-H-A-N-G-E, and then you click on the search bar, hit enter, and that'll take you to our YouTube channel. When you get to our YouTube channel, um, basically, uh, if this is your first visit or you have not subscribed uh, to this YouTube channel, then it'll automatically start playing the uh, video that is the uh, Blue Earth video, which is a three-minute long video that uh, gives you a tour of uh, basically uh, the entire FlexCom opportunity. Uh, so it takes you through the uh, customer uh, point of view, the merchant point of view, and the, uh, the DMR independent rep point of view, all within just about three minutes. Uh, once that video has played out, you'll see a couple of options there. In fact, let me go and do this anew here. Uh, put a couple of things up there uh, just today, but uh, they're not ready for release yet. Uh, so basically the only things that we've released today, anything new, would be in your back office. Uh, the mission statement for FlexCom America, uh, the first draft of that is in your back office. Uh, that's the only thing we've posted up and made visible today. Other than, of course, uh, we've been adding dates to the uh, calendar. Uh, there are some issues with the uh, event calendar. Uh, it is... Uh, kind of uh, showing some strange uh, dates uh, off in November, but we have time to fix that, so um, uh, fear not. By the time we get to November, the calendar should be showing things correctly. Uh, also, as far as uh, housekeeping, uh, if you had had an issue over the past few days where you could not uh, log into your back office at flexcom.com as a partner, uh, then it, the uh, issue can be resolved by simply uh, taking the most recent update for your browser. So this is a, a situation where the browsers were updated. Uh, Internet Explorer, I know for certain, um, was having this issue as well as the um, uh, Chrome. Uh, and this is on a Windows 8 computer, so Windows 8 or Windows 8 Point one, or uh, there's a couple of updates after 8.1, so let's call it 8.x. Um, if you are on a Windows 8.x computer uh, and you had uh, automatic updates for your, uh, your browser, for your Chrome or your Internet Explorer or your Firefox, over the weekend, uh, starting on Friday, uh, there was an update that came out that uh, basically broke the Java. The Java was not readable on not just our website, but at places all over the Internet. So you could see uh, our website, but you might not have been able to uh, click on things. Uh, or if you did click on it, the next thing you got was like a blank page. That was a Java issue from the update for the browsers. If you go and get the update for the browsers again, if you just go and kind of force an update, uh, then you will see that uh, everything will start working. So they uh, put out, a, probably Java put out a bad piece of software. The uh, browsers um, companies uh, deployed it, and it, it made things not work around the Internet, not just our website, but other uh, people that had uh, some Java on their website. Uh, certain buttons didn't work. Certain things didn't work. That's because of the, uh, the browser updates. This brings us to that point that we made yesterday. We received a lot of emails saying, um, asking for clarification on this. Basically, what we're saying is, yes, update your browser, but update it manually. So we're not telling you to not get updates. I uh, would never tell you that. Basically, getting the updates makes you more secure, especially for Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer is the, one of the, the most hacked uh, pieces of software running around the Internet, and so you definitely want to get your updates with uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, I, in general, don't recommend Internet Explorer. 
uh, but it was the first one to uh, be up after uh, this uh, thing happened on Friday. So uh, basically, Internet Explorer is the best uh, browser to find uh, Chrome or any other browser. I don't like it in general, but they were the first ones to get fixed. And so um, to this uh, end, I have to give Microsoft kudos. They fixed it very quickly, whereas the other browsers took uh, a little while to fix it. Uh, so what I was saying yesterday is do not uh, – um, it is best, it is recommended by me personally that if you are uh, going to be doing presentations, you want to turn off automatic updates. You want to turn off automatic updates for your browser, for any of your software, and definitely for your operating system. You don't want Windows 8 to go all blue screen on you when you're trying to do a demo uh, in front of the uh, Chamber of Commerce. You want to be able to know that your computer is going to work like it did uh, five minutes ago and not be trying to do an update in the middle of your presentation. So that's what I was talking about. I'm not telling you not get updates. I'm actually telling you the exact opposite. Get updates. Yes, we want you to get updates to be secure, to have everything uh, working as best uh, as it can. Um, but controlling when the update happens is what we're talking about. So for those who misconstrued what I said as saying, do not take updates, that's not what I was saying. apologize for any confusion there. Uh, you want to get your updates, but you want to control when they happen. Uh, if you want to schedule it, you want to have it scheduled off-peak, so at a time where you know there's no chance that you'd be giving an update, uh, giving a, a presentation. So uh, for most people, that'd be like in the middle of the night. Make sure you leave your computer uh, plugged in and turned on and have your updates scheduled for the middle of the night and for your, your um, antivirus and so forth. Uh, to happen to update and run in the middle of the night. That is a pretty good uh, practice. Even then, uh, I do recommend still controlling it. I, I would recommend manual updates about once a week. Uh, it doesn't need to be on all the time. You don't need to update every day, every hour. And if you have uh, Internet Explorer, you'll see that uh, pushes come all the time through Internet Explorer. And so uh, you're kind of leaving yourself in a lurch there if an update happens and it makes it so that uh, some part of your FlexCom website doesn't work or the Kate video doesn't play or whatever it is you're trying to do. You're trying to go to YouTube and watch one of the playlists and, and show this to a, a brand new prospect and then your browser decides to go to sleep on you and uh, do an update. That's not good. So what we're saying is control when you go into an update, not that we don't want you to get updates. We definitely do want you to get updates. So once again, YouTube.com, Power to Change is what you write into that search, second largest search engine on Earth. Uh, then when you see the icon for the, uh, uh, the POS uh, 4S terminal, that's us. Click on that Power to Change. That will take you into our, um, our YouTube channel, and that will make it so that the uh, video, the uh, Blue Earth video, will automatically play uh, if this is your first visit and or if you uh, have not uh, subscribed. If you want to subscribe, which we definitely recommend, subscribing helps uh, yourself in that you'll get an update every time we add a new video to the uh, playlist at all, so either to the playlist or just to the videos in general. Uh, you'll get an update there. Uh, and that will be an email that's sent to the email address that you choose. Uh, also, uh, you're helping uh, raise us up on search engines, uh, the other search engines, not just YouTube, but also uh, you're helping raise us up on um, Yahoo and Google Search and all these other search engines, ask.com. Uh, so it, it basically helps us that you subscribe. It also helps us that you watch a video from beginning to end. So uh, in general, when you're looking at how um, the search engines uh, rate which website or which video they're going to put up as uh, something uh, that you're probably looking for, if you typed in FlexCom, for example, how would they know which video you are probably looking for? Uh, it's by uh, how often a video is clicked and uh, how many times you've watched that video from beginning to end. So if you watch the whole video, that does us better uh, than just clicking on videos. Uh, when you're looking at the uh, Blue Earth video, so probably best to let that play out. That gives you a view of uh, like a three-minute overview of the FlexCom opportunity. Above the Blue Earth video, uh, you'll, once the Blue, Blue Earth video stops, you'll see uh, the ability to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And go ahead and do that. We recommend that. And then above the Blue uh, Earth uh, video icon, you'll see that it says Home Videos, Playlists, Channels, discussions and about. Uh, if you uh, like our uh, videos, if you, if you click on like and then uh, say that you uh, leave a message, say that you liked it, and then also copy that video and uh, uh, 
paste it over there on your Facebook and on your Twitter and uh, kind of get the word out about that video. All these things help raise our brand and help uh, raise us up in search engines, which makes it so that when somebody, you talk to a prospect and they go and they Google Flexcom, they will find this video and that video and our uh, website and other things that, uh, that we want them to see, the positive messages about Flexcom. So um, when you go into our YouTube channel, uh, you want to click on Playlists. And in playlists, there's three playlists that are uh, important to us. Uh, these are the ones that we constructed uh, to uh, address a certain uh, tutorial uh, requirement. So basically, we have uh, video tutorials for uh, the customer side of, of things, the uh, customer overview uh, video tutorial system there has uh, seven videos in it. And then there's the DMR independent representative uh, training. Uh, that has uh, 12 videos in it. And then the uh, certification series, how to uh, sign up and set up uh, merchants that has uh, now 16 videos in it. Uh, the most asked question overnight has to do with the uh, video emailing um, video that's in there and also the video emailing process. If you go into the uh, certification series, how to sign up and set up merchants, you'll see that there's uh, some 16 videos. The second one from the bottom is sending video email from merchant back office. Most of the questions had to do with what format are the videos to be shot in. Uh, basically, uh, as a rule of thumb, it's best if you, um, I would recommend, uh, using whatever you have and saving the video as an MP4. That's M like mother, P like Paul, and the number four, so MP4. M MP4 video is uh, generically a, a very viewable video. When you see videos on YouTube, a lot of times, probably the majority of time, they are uh, MP4s. Now, if you're... Um, like I am, I have a bunch of Windows 8 computers around me. Um, when you get your Windows 8, and a lot of you probably have Windows 8, which explains a lot of the emails that we receive asking about how do you make a movie on a Windows computer, Windows 8 didn't necessarily come with a Movie Maker. What I was explaining the other day is that Movie Maker is a program that is by Microsoft and is built to run inside of Windows 8, but for whatever reason, in some versions of Windows 8, Microsoft decided not to put Movie Maker in the uh, suite. But you can get it by uh, going to uh, Google Search and typing in Movie Maker. And uh, probably Microsoft might be a good idea to put in there too, because it oh, just putting in Movie Maker um, brought up a bunch of other things. Uh, you'll see. Okay, so you want to type in Movie Maker, one word, and then Microsoft uh, Windows 8. Uh, you'll see that there is an update that you can get for your Windows 8 from Microsoft of the Movie Maker uh, program. And uh, you basically, uh, once again, this is coming from Microsoft, so um, if, if you are a Windows person, you have a Windows-based computer, uh, there's no more trustworthy sites than Microsoft.com because uh, that's where you get your uh, operating system updates, for example. So in order to get Movie Maker, you'll just go to that, uh, from that Google search or whatever you use to search, you'll go and take from Microsoft. You don't want to take it from anybody except for Microsoft. So you'll see when you search for these things, this is just a tip in general, you want to always take whatever uh, download you find from the manufacturer that you're looking for. You don't want to go to um, uh, downloads.com and, and type in Movie Maker, uh, even though Microsoft may spin some of these uh, downloads off to um, downloads.com or CNET or somebody else. It's best if you go straight to Microsoft and type in Movie uh, Maker or use your Google search and you're looking for Microsoft.com solutions there and you get it from Microsoft. If you get it from somebody else, that's where you're going to get all these pop-ups. We have 5,000 pop-ups that, that uh, come from uh, this uh, simple install of, uh, of this Microsoft program. And we don't want that because you're going to blame me for you having pop-ups. Uh, in general, if you go to the manufacturer, uh, for instance, we were talking uh, about the uh, PDFs. Uh, PDFs is, is a format for uh, printed materials, kind of like a Microsoft Word, only it makes it so you can't change it. Uh, with PDFs, you um, need to have a Adobe Acrobat reader in order to uh, read the PDFs. Uh, 
But if you go to if you just go and say PDF reader, you type that into Google search, you're going to find all kind of manufacturers, not even not just Adobe. We recommend that you go to Adobe. That's why we say its name, uh, so that you're not going to some other site and getting this um, this software. So even if you did type in Adobe uh, micro, uh, Adobe Acrobat reader. Uh, you're going to see all these different things pop up, all these different uh, sources for Adobe Acrobat downloads, and you're going to want to go straight to Adobe for it. Uh, Adobe may spin you off to CNET or somebody else, but you're less likely to get a virus or a uh, malware or a whole bunch of pop-ups with all these games and um, uh, browser uh, tools, toolbars, and things that you'll never use, the weather bug and all these other things that are just uh, a nuisance if you go right to the manufacturer. So once again, uh, the reason why we're talking about this is that uh, we had emails saying, okay, I have Windows 8, but I don't have a Movie Maker. got a lot of those. And so um, the Movie Maker is a, a basically, you know, Windows 8 is kind of like a, a, a series of, of Legos. You're, you can build your own kind of custom version of Windows 8. And so with Windows 8, you'll go and search for a Movie Maker, and you'll just go get that little Lego, Lego brick to put into your Windows Lego fortress or whatever. Uh, so uh, that's, that's basically how you want to do it. That's where you want to get it. And then um, Movie Maker allows you to very quickly, uh, once it's installed, it installs pretty quickly. It's not all that big, and it's probably just covered, buried in your uh, Windows operating system, which is why it downloads and installs so quickly. Who knows? Um, but it does download and install very quickly. And then uh, when you're in Movie Maker, uh, you'll see a little webcam icon, and that's you want to click on that if you're using your webcam and you want to shoot a video that you're going to put into your uh, merchant back office to send out to the uh, various customers. So once again, on an Apple, none of this has to even be talked about. Your Apple just works. Uh, you look for an icon that looks like a, a camera, and you're in business. In Windows, of course, it's a little bit more difficult, as it always is. Uh, and um, unfortunately, Movie Maker, which is a critical part of Windows 7 and earlier, um, is not in necessarily in Windows 8. And we um, but basically... Uh, you're going to need to and you don't need to but I recommend that you install it since you have a webcam in your uh, computer uh, you may already have some sort of uh, other version of uh, camcorder software some sort of camcorder recording software it may not have mp4 it may not put out the video in mp4 it may put it out in its own proprietary format or some other format that never really caught on uh, that's why I'm recommending movie maker for uh, people on PCs um, with Apple, Apple folks, you have the ability to do whatever it is you can dream of. So um, I, I defer to your your computer will help you out there and just go to uh, Apple and ask them questions. Uh, but you probably have just an icon you click on and you record it and it's there and you get to choose as you're saving it. How do you want to save it? And you want to save it. I, it's my personal opinion. You save it as an MP4. Uh, that way most people can uh, watch it. And they can even watch it on their uh, phones, for example. So... Uh, after you get that um, that software installed, you want to then um, shoot a video, save it as an MP4. Uh, you probably want to give it a good name and make remember that the name will be viewable by the the party that you send these emails to. So once again, we're talking about sending a video email from the uh, merchant back office. There's a video email tool in there now, and we're talking about that video that is in the uh, playlist for the, uh, the merchant side and the uh, questions that people have been asking about uh, how to get vi their, a video from their computer into uh, their, uh, into their um, basically it's kind of like a, uh, a, uh, a small YouTube that you have in your own merchant back office. You have your own little playlist there. You have your, the videos that you uploaded from your computer, for example. And, and this goes back to that example uh, that you see on the three-minute overview with the Chilean sea bass and the restaurant. So this is where the uh, merchant can use their computer and the camera that's probably built into their computer, hopefully a laptop or something like that. They have a camera built into it. They record that quick video about Chilean sea bass or the or the hats that are for sale, or if it's the the, uh, the fictitious um, blinged out toothbrush store, the brush off, they shoot their little video about the uh, diamond encrusted uh, uh, dental floss. They, they pull it out and they show it, and they say we have a sale going on for the next uh, hour, and then they they can push that 
send that video to the email addresses of their customers. The video that is in the, um, uh, the playlist named uh, Certification Series, How to Sign Up and Set Up a Merchant. Uh, this is video number 15, walks you through how to uh, send the video uh, from that system. And um, basically, most of the questions had to do <laughs> with people uh, never having used their computer to make a video. Uh, so once again, when you go to a merchant, they're going to assume that you are an expert. They're thinking that you are a marketing expert and you know how um, the Internet works in general, you know how computers work in general, you know how videos work in general. Uh, you definitely need to know how your terminal works and how these tools in your back office works. Since you are a uh, DMR probably on this conference call and you don't have access to the uh, merchant back office, uh, this video will walk you through how to shoot the video and how to send the video. Uh, also, when you are marketing to your merchants, this could be something that you have downloaded. So you download this um, uh, or just take the link for this video. When you're watching the video, send video email from Merchant Back Office. That's the name of the video. At the top, you'll see an address line, address bar, and you copy that URL or you click on the uh, share uh, link underneath the video, and it will give you uh, the URL, the, the web address for that video. You copy that, and then you can send that as an email to the merchants that you've signed up. So that they, you wanna, I recommend being engaged with them on a regular basis, teaching them on a regular basis, and dropping by, the, uh, by their store on a regular basis to keep them engaged and showing them that the uh, video tool is now up and uh, working. Uh, we'll, we'll probably give you a couple of feathers in your cap, so go ahead and do that, and you have this video to send to them, and uh, they'll They'll probably thank you for it. Uh, so uh, definitely follow those instructions. Uh, they are working right now, and uh, this is something that uh, is uh, one of the things that we had talked about about kind of like a, a month ago, almost three weeks to four weeks ago, where there were going to be updates to the back offices, all three of the back offices, the merchant back office, the customer back office, and, of course, the DMR back office. This is one of the updates for the merchant back office with more to come. Uh, one of the things you're going to be seeing coming pretty soon are uh, items in the store for the merchant. What might a merchant want to buy? The merchant might want to buy uh, some uh, um, uh, cards. So they ran through the 100 cards that came with their terminal. Now they want to buy some more cards. Uh, they might want to buy some uh, tents. These are basically little cardboard things to put on tables to promote uh, Flexcom. Um, they may want to buy stickers for the windows, things like this. You'll see these things uh, going on, um, being for uh, sale in the merchant back office. And for you DMRs who come from the, uh, the old direct sales uh, marketing um, system, uh, kind of way of life, uh, there should be CV with these. Uh, basically, you'll see an announcement come out uh, from our eye contact uh, when we uh, are, uh, have these for sale, when these are actually in the merchant's back office in their store and they can buy them. That's when we'll make announcements, but we won't make announcements uh, via eye contact uh, until it's actually deployed in the stores uh, for the uh, merchant. So the uh, Flex store in the merchant's back office uh, will have these items and more items. And uh, when they can buy them from themselves, we'll make a, uh, an announcement. We had a couple of people who asked why, when their merchant bought a terminal, why they could still uh, buy more terminals. That's because they may have more than one cash register. They may have more than one store. So a merchant could have, uh, for instance, uh, we talk about this on a regular basis, but they could have a, a, a giant place like Gillies. Uh, Gillies is uh, not only a, 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 a rodeo arena, it's not only a bar, it's not only a clothing store, it's, it's like six or ten different things with about 20 different, maybe 30 different cash registers. If you've never been to Gillies, it's a very big country western bar with everything that you might expect it all the country western bars uh, put together. And so that each Gillies may have like 10 or 20 or 30 um, uh, cash, register, cash registers in it, and they may need to buy uh, 10, 20, 30 uh, terminals. So uh, if, if uh, we want to give the merchant the ability to buy as many terminals as they need and as their needs grow. Let's say that they wanted to see how this worked. They bought their first terminal, and then they knew that they had uh, three or four cash registers. Now, because they like the way that it works, they want to have uh, three or four uh, terminals. They can go and buy them one at a time or all of them at once uh, from their back office. It's nine fifty uh, plus tax and shipping, and the, uh, there's commissionable volume on those from uh, when the merchant purchases from their back office. Okay, uh, so that should take care of that. Um, let's see here. 
the other issues that we had um, with just the, the last few minutes that we uh, have coming up here uh, had to do with um, the forms. Basically, when you go into your back office and you're looking at the forms, the forms are named for the exact transaction that's going on. So if you're a partner, you're a, a, a what used to be a VIP, and you're selling your one of your terminals to a brand new uh, eBiz, uh, American eBiz uh, kit uh, partner, a DMR independent rep who signed up with a, the, the new eBiz kit for $399 plus tax, and they're, they want to have a terminal for uh, demonstrating the, uh, the, uh, to merchants and to, uh, to uh, DMR prospects, then they can purchase from a VIP a terminal that can be used only for demo purposes. So a, a new person coming in, signing up today, or, or since uh, we've uh, put out the eBiz kit, um, cannot, uh, there's not a, a way for them to buy a terminal in their back office, but if you happen to have some terminals, and you want to um, sell one or give one to this uh, DMR, uh, then there's a form for that. So you just want to look at the name of each of the different forms and go with the one. And there's also a product description uh, for that form that explains what it is. So the name of it should be a good explanation, and then there should be a detail, a little bit more detail in the uh, description box below, and that'll walk you through how uh, what that uh, that form is for. And then basically uh, you both complete it or, or however. Uh, some require you both to sign. Some only requires one signature. And uh, you uh, execute that and fax that in to our fax number. And our fax number uh, is 702-948-5653. That's 702 702- Nine four eight five six five three had uh, several uh, a lot of people sign up over the last uh, like five days, and they were asking how to get the W nine form to us. You could fax it to seven zero two nine four eight five six five three, or you can uh, scan it in your scanner, printer, copier device. So you scan the completed and signed forms like the W nine and so forth. You sign that, you scan it, and then you um, um, attach it as an email. Uh, attach it to an email that you send to American Support at flexcom.com. So our email address is American Support at flexcom.com, and uh, you send that in there with a, a brief description of what you're sending it in for. Always include your uh, ID number, your DMR independent rep ID number. Uh, it's best if you put that in the subject line so we can find your um, your emails easily and up. Uh, basically, if we have to escalate it uh, to a different department or to Germany, we can do it more easily when you've put your ID number in there uh, in the subject line. Then we can get it right to the right people who can get it uh, processed as quickly as possible. All right, so we're at about 627. And in general, like uh, we talked about, these um, conference calls are going to be shortened as we have a lot of uh, meetings and other things that are going on um, around the clock almost uh, uh, every day, including the quote-unquote weekends. Uh, so we had to cut back a little bit on the time here, and instead of doing a live webinar and then have people ask us if there's a recording of the webinar, now we record the video, and then we, tr- we guide you to the video on this conference call. We'll be using this format uh, for a little bit uh, longer going forward uh, while we're still doing all these um, uh, meetings and updates on the, uh, the website and uh, processes and things that are going on. All right, so uh, once again, my name is Larry Skinner. I'm the uh, Chief Operations Officer for FlexCom America Incorporated. Anything that's said on this conference call can be repurposed as FlexCom sees fit. And uh, we do this at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, pretty much every weekday. Oh, the, that's another um, point. Um, people are sending in emails asking, why don't we send out as many emails as we used to send out? The reason why is that this conference call happens every day at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And so we don't feel that it's necessary to send an email out to you every day reminding you of this conference call. We'll only send an email out regarding this conference call when there's a change or uh, a particularly special guest on the conference call. Uh, if there's a change, like uh, we're not going to do it on a particular day because of uh, some meeting or travel or something to that effect, then we'll send out an email. But in general, sending out an email every day to remind you about this conference call, uh, we did uh, have a concern that we don't, especially as we're adding every single email address of every uh, active partner into our, uh, our uh, eye contact list, uh, we don't want to overwhelm you with uh, kind of uh, 
run-of-the-mill emails. We want to email you when something uh, active is happening, something that we need to alert you to, breaking news, that sort of thing. All right, so we'll uh, take this up again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific. Uh, once again, uh, every weekday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, this is Larry Skinner, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.